Hey everyone, my name is Sarah Knight Nally, and today I'm going to be talking to you about different Latino cultures and their arts that have made their way in the U.S. since the mid 20th century. History has always meant a lot to me, so I thoroughly enjoyed learning about this topic. So the Latino presence through art has been in the United States since the mid 20th century because there is such a big link between the Latino arts and the art and culture here in the United States. One of the places that this art is displayed so greatly is at the Smithsonian American Art Museum and their collection of the Latino art. They have 72 different artists that are featured and those artists have, seven, or have 92 different artworks um, that are on display and 63 of those have been acquired since 2011, which is great. So for the past three years, there has been an exhibition that has um, now been on display or has been worked on for the last three years and it is called Our America, the Latino Presence in American Art. And it was created by E. Carmen Ramos. So um, through this, she has just been focusing on artists who saw such a big shift in the American culture and their view um, or the view of their works with their references to Latino culture, some different Latino experiences, and the Latino history, um, since those are, since they are such a part of a big, broad culture. Um, the artists that are shown within this exhibition um, come from backgrounds such as Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, um, and Dominican descent, and also there are other Latin American descents that are living here in America. So the reason that the mid-century is so important um, is because this is a time that many of these artists started attending art school um, here in the United States. Some of these artists were also pioneers in art movements such as um, the abstract expressionism and minimalism. There were also um, a part of community contests um, where their position within the American society was really shown. Um, and just another fun fact is that the civil rights movement had a huge impact on these people during this time period um, being here in the United States. So just some names of some different artists and their backgrounds. Um, if you watch the video for the link that I'm gonna include where I got all my information from, um, I'm just gonna explain some of the different um, art that was featured and the artists who did them and just some about their background. So two of the first arts that really stood out to me um, were painted by Mel Casas. Um, she has two arts that are featured in the Smithsonian. Um, the name is Humanscape Brownies of the Southwest and Humanscape Barrio Dog. So Humanscape Brownies of the Southwest was made in 1970 and it depicts the mascot from the Frito-Lay's corn chips commercial, which I'm sure all of y'all know about. Um, this mascot is surrounded by a plate of brownies, a Girl Scout, a Native American, and some quotes of the masterworks. And this piece really just depicts different stereotypes of the rich cultures that were around um, in the 1970s. And another work of art that was made by Mel Casas was the Barrio Dog, and that was made in 1987, and it's just this black dog um, that she painted and is on display. Another artist is Carmen Herrera. Um, this, the piece of artwork that I'm going to talk about was shown when they were talking about um, the differences in the mid-century to the present day. Um, the piece of work is called Blanco y Verde, and it was made in 1960. Um, and it just looked so interesting to me whenever it came up on the video. Um, it You'll see it as just different green triangles that meet different places of white on the canvas. Um, and they meet all around the edges. And whenever I was doing um, just different work, trying to figure out about all these different artists, I found out that Herrera left Cuba in 1939 to move to, D to New York. And that is when she painted this picture, which is really cool because it's like a geometric work, which was super interesting. Um, I feel like it just gives you a chance to determine the relationship between colors and form, especially in um, the 20th century. Um, another work of art or another artist was Jesus Morales. Um, in the video, this work of art was shown in the reference about the um, Latino culture. 
So, just a fun fact about Mor Morales. Um, he received a grant from the National Endowment for Arts and an awards in Visual Arts Fellowship. His largest public um, commission is the Houston Police Officer Memorial um, that is found in Houston because he is currently living in Texas. Um, this um, artwork like the memorial is just a massive granite earthwork and it was completed in 1992 and one thing that you do need to know about him is that all his work is in granite so whenever you're watching the video you will see two of um his different granite works that are depicted here um the first one that was shown in the video i think was the first one and one of his artworks in the museum is the granite weaving um is the granite weaving of the lap straight one and um the other one is the georgia steel so the one that i found to be the most interesting was the granite weaving it really stuck out to me um i believe that all of his work originates deep within the earth and you can read a lot about that in anything you look up about him which is super interesting since all of his work is done in granite um the granite weaving was done in 1988 strictly from granite and to me it looks like the walls of a really steep pyramid um maybe with like a ladder going up the side which is really cool and i think that it is used to remind us of the different ancient structures that were found in mexico and in present day iraq which are super interesting um and just one more um artist um she is from an American nationality. It is Teresa Fernandez, and she um, did the Nocturnal Horizon line, which was super interesting. It is a graphite art. Looks nothing like anything you could ever do with a pencil. It's super like structured and laid out and really cool. Um, it was done in 1910, and it depicts a landscape. You can now that you know um you can go back and watch and just see the sky and then the water and then the land down at the bottom and it's not of a specific place which is super interesting it gives you the opportunity just to put yourself in a place of your choosing that has the same type of landscape um i hope you found out some super interesting information from my video because i really enjoyed learning about this topic and doing this presentation thanks